Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am listening to Madman Reason Rocks, actually. He's done a song. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the Shakespeare tag. So this was created by Wild Butt Garden, and I was actually tagged in the original video. And there are 11 questions, so I'm going to do them, and we're going to see how we turn out. I also have some books. This is not the order that these are the answers to the questions. I just chucked them down on, on the floor. Okay, anyway, let's go. Question one, much ado about nothing. Your favorite bickering couple whom everyone knows really care about each other can be romantic relationship or friendship. So as soon as I saw the original tag for this, I had to pick out, it's, uh, I've gone for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire here, but it's Ron and Hermione. It's just the most obvious coupling, I think. And uh, yeah, it's just literally, that was the thing that came to mind when I heard that question, so I had to go for it. Question two, measure for measure. A book whose plot or genre is really hard to explain to other people. So I'm going for Stephen King, The Stand. And the reason I'm going for this is not that the basic plot is difficult to explain. The basic plot is it's good versus evil during, you know, a new plague that comes down, basically. But the actual plot itself and, you know, what happens from page to page and chapter to chapter, I mean... I have no idea how anybody could could write a, s a summary of this book, to be honest. Question number three, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Your favourite book featuring fairies or elves? So I've gone for a really obscure one. This is R.A. Salvatore, The Woods Out Back. And this is the, f the first book of a trilogy called, I think it's called the Spear Wielder Trilogy. Let's see when it was published. I mean, my copy of it's fallen apart. 1993. And... Um, Basically, this story follows a dude called Gary, who he works in like a factory, and then one day he finds that the, there's a, like a portal to the fairyland in the woods out back, and he ends up becoming the unwitting sort of, you know, the chosen one trope. Gary Leager, a dude who works in the equivalent to one of Detroit's car factories, ends up becoming the chosen one, and he's not very good at it. <laughs> But there are lots of elves in this, including an elf called Kells and Ellen Elviel Gil Ravady, I believe. Question number four, Hamlet, an underutilized female character. So we're going back to Harry Potter again. I have Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince here. It's just a token book to illustrate it. And um, I'm going for Lily Potter. And actually, this is based on the fantastic discussion that Spinster's Library did as part of her, uh, you know, Women of Harry Potter series. And she pointed out that Lily Potter is actually dead throughout and we never see Lily Potter as herself as a character. We only ever see her through the memories of others. And it's really sad to think of it like that. And I think she's underused because of it because she had potential. Question number five, the sonnets, choose your favorite poem. The poem I'm going for is part of this collection which is Howl and Other Poems by Allen Ginsberg. And uh, it's a poem called America. And um, I happen to know it off by heart and it's long as well. So strap yourself in because this is going to be a good three minutes. I'm just going to put my blindfold on so you know I'm not cheating. I sleep with this sometimes. I can't see anything. Actually, no, I can see a small little bit of light down here. Let's see. Apparently, I have a big nose because it's sort of sticking out. All right. I don't know if I'm in frame anymore. But anyway, this is America by Allen Ginsberg, and I am paraphrasing part of this because it does use the N-word, and I don't want to be a party to that. But this is close enough, so. America, America, I've given you all, and now I'm nothing. America, $2.27, January 17th, 1956. I can't stand my own mind. America, when will you be angelic? When will you take off your clothes? When will you look at yourself through the grave? America, why are your libraries full of tears? I'm sick of your insane demands. Why can't I go into supermarkets and buy what I need with my good looks? America, after all, it is you and I who are perfect and not the next world. Your machinery is too much for me. You made me want to be a saint. There must be some other way to settle this argument. And Burroughs is in Tangiers. I don't think he's coming back. It's sinister. America, are you being sinister or is this some form of practical joke? I'm trying to come to the point. I refuse to give up my obsessions. America, stop pushing me. I know what I'm doing. 
America, the plum blossoms are falling. I haven't read a newspaper for months. Every day somebody goes on trial for murder. America, I feel sentimental about the wobblies. America, I was a communist when I was a kid and I'm not sorry. I smoke marijuana every chance I get. I sit in my house for days on end and stare at the roses in the closet. Whenever I go to Chinatown, I get drunk but never get laid. My mind is made up. There's gonna be trouble. You should have seen me reading Marx. I have mystical visions and cosmic vibrations. I won't say the Lord's Prayer. My psychoanalyst says I'm perfectly right. America, I still haven't told you what you did to Uncle Max after he came back from Russia last summer. I'm addressing you. Are you going to let your emotional life be run by Time Magazine? I'm obsessed by Time Magazine. I read it every week. I slink past its covers at the corner candy store. I read it in the basement of the Berkeley Public Library. It's always telling me about responsibility. Businessmen are serious. Movie producers are serious. Everybody's serious but me. And it occurs to me that I am America, but I'm talking to myself again. Asia is rising against me. I haven't got a Chinaman's chance. I better consider my national resources. My national resources consist of two joints of marijuana, millions of genitals, an unpublishable private lit literature that goes at 1400 miles per hour, 25,000 mental institutions. I say nothing about my millions of underprivileged who live in the flower pots under the light of 500 suns. I've already abolished the whorehouses of France. Tangiers is next to go. My ambition is to become president despite the fact that I'm a Catholic. America, how can I write my holy litanies when you're in your silly mood? But I will continue like Henry Ford. My strophes are as individual as his automobiles. More so, they're all different sexes. America, I will sell you strophes. $2,500 a piece, 500 down on your old strophe. America, free Tom Mooney. Sacco and Vanzetti must not die. I am the Scottsboro boys. America, when I was seven, my mama used to take me to communist cell meetings. They sold us garbanzos a handful per ticket. A ticket cost a nickel and the speeches were free. Everybody was angelic and sentimental about the wob workers. Scott Nearing was a grand old man, a real mensch. Mother Bloor made me cry. I once saw Israel amped a plane. And everybody must have been a spy. America, you don't really want to go to war. America, it's them bad Russians, them Russians, them Russians, them Chinamen and them Russians, them Russians power mad. Her want to eat us alive. Her want to take our cars out of our garages. Her wants Red Reader's Digest. Her want to take Chicago. Her make us all work 16 hours a day. Help. America, this is quite serious. America, this is the impression I get when I look at my television set, America. Is this correct? I'd better get right down to the job. It's true, I don't want to join the army or turn lathes and precision parts factories. I'm nearsighted and psychopathic anyway. America, I'm putting my queer shoulder to the wheel. And now I can't see anything. Question number six. A protagonist willing to do anything to get what they want. Amy from Gone Girl. Even though I hated her. She, that she fits the bill more than any character I can think of. Question seven, Anthony and Cleopatra, your favorite trope slash bookish, bookish buzzword, historical figure, etc., for which you still haven't found that perfect book. Okay, Adolf Hitler, because I've, I've read the odd, you know, Hitler book where he's a fictional character and you know those books where it's all about the changing of history and stuff, but it's never been done well, not at least not well enough for me. Question number eight, Titus Andronicus, a lesser well-known work by a popular author, one which you want more people to read. Oh, I missed this one. I've left the book on the shelf because I actually didn't read my notes properly, but this is Only You Can Save Mankind by Terry Pratchett, and it's part of his Johnny Maxwell series, and it's excellent. It's about this kid who is blowing up aliens on a computer game when they basically ask him for help. They say, stop it, you're killing us. Why are you doing it? And uh, the, the events that unshoot from there. Question number nine, King Lear, a complex female villain or anti-hero? So I'm going for Mrs. Coulter from Northern Lights because it's not one of my tag videos unless I mention Northern Lights. She is definitely a villain rather than an anti-hero, but she is a very complex character and it's interesting to read the trilogy and to see what her motivations are. Question number 10, The Taming of the Shrew. Choose two polarizing books, one you loved and one you hated. All right, well, I'm gonna repeat myself here. I'm going to go for Gone Girl and The Stand. I did not like Gone Girl. I did like The Stand. Question number 11. Give me your hands if we be friends. Tag some people. So I'm going to tag So I Read, The May Cave, and Sophisticated Books. And anyway, on that note, I'm running along battery, so thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new here. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Leave a comment to let me know if you've read any of these books, and I'll see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.